someone has rightly said that it is better to have your nose in a book than in someone else's business. Hello and a very warm welcome to all the lovely viewers of Doordarshan. I'm Riddhi Sharma and today we have with us Dr. Rita Chaudhary, who is the Director of National Book Trust of India. Besides being a noted Assamese writer, she is also the proud recipient of the prestigious Sahitya Academy Award. We welcome you, ma'am. How are the preparations going on for the forthcoming New Delhi World Book Fair 2016? Now we are all set to host uh, New Delhi World Book Fair uh, 2016. Any specific preparations? Uh, always it is see, special for us. Mm. So this time also we are uh, giving all our effort to make it a success. All right. The theme of the forthcoming uh, New Delhi World Book Fair would be the cultural heritage of India. Yes. What has NBT to offer the world readers under this theme? The theme, cultural heritage of India, it covers almost all the aspects of Indian society. Mm. So this time we are going to uh, showcase uh, the Indian philosophical tradition language tradition and our literature all in the theme pavilion. So this is a theme that Indian cultural heritage. Uh, this will also cover the uh, all the languages as and our um, main theme is uh, cultural heritage of India. Our tagline is Vivid Bharat. Vivid mm. Ekatmata. This okay. is a unity and diversity. Mm. So we're going to focus on this particular aspect that unity and diversity, as India is a you know a land of diversity, right, but there right. is always an unity. So we're going to uh, present before the world this speciality of Indian society. I think that's the most beautiful thing about our country that yes. we are uh, we have such a great diversity but still we are united. Yes. So you've always wanted to contribute your bit to the society. Yes. And that's what your li writing is all about. Yes. Mm. I, I write um, uh, generally I try to um, write on behalf of those maybe is a living thing or non-living thing who don't have their voice or who cannot raise their voice suppose a tree a river a community so uh, I feel it from if you can say so it's from yeah. my soul that I should serve I, I have a mission so this is my mission that I have a very uh, God has given me or the nature has given me a, a power to express so I express uh, when I express, I don't think about myself. I think about my surroundings. And I think that the strength I have, the very, very little strength, I should use for a greater cause. So I uh, pick up the different social issues I, and write uh, a novel on them, on these issues, so that it, it can reach the readers they can feel, they can raise a voice for these people or different other things for whom I am writing. So it would not be uh, wrong to say that you become a voice for the voiceless. Those who don't have a voice, you are their voice. See, uh, I am not a voice, but my pen is the voice. Yeah, obviously, yeah. through your pen. Through my pen. Yes. I try to speak for these people or on behalf of those who cannot speak. Cannot speak means who yeah. don't have a voice or who yeah. cannot uh, assert their rights, who cannot save themselves yeah. for these people I try to write, like throw away children, like uh, the rivers, like the communities who are marginalized. So I try to write. You received the Sahitya Academy Award for your novel Dio Langkui. Yes. That is the Divine Sword. Divine Sword. Yeah. So how easy or difficult was it to write the novel? 
tell us something about it this is very really interesting this is um, it is based on like um, oral traditions and history and from uh, this is a, it is about um, the that the hist uh, the story about of uh, royal family that is a tiwa community very small community um, and i tried to depict uh, a bigger picture the that is the backdrop was big that is the society of that period 700 years back how the small communities live together peacefully there is no communal rioting kind of thing so i thought uh, that i should think about how these people there was a uh, you know there was a uh, place called jagi road the we can see that summit international summit the position the the people that representative of different countries how they sit there is equality right and the that tribal kings they used to sit like that and they decided and solved all the issues on this discussion table so many years back and i tried to write against war against violence i tried to write about love and it is about the uh, i tried to depict the culture of that community um, different aspects i covered in that novel another very popular novel of yours is makam yes which uh, got you a lot of great uh, national and international acclaim yes. what is it about it is about the in, uh, indian chinese especially the assamese chinese the assamese chinese uh, is a community it's not chinese is a part of the greater assamese identity in uh, uh, when um, t was uh, the robert bruce he discovered t in the singfo kingdom in assam just into that uh, that period of assam uh then the tea industry started in assam so british brought the chinese people to develop the tea industry to establish the industry in assam so chinese people came from different parts of the world from kuli depo from calcutta from south china so they married local maidens okay. and they that were new society and they also married the uh the people who were who were brought from different uh, parts of british india to work in the tea industry they made uh, uh, the this girl from that community also tea community now we say and a new society was formed but in 1962 they were uh, arrested and uh, they, they uh, arrested and those they th thought that they were indians they were left behind and some were arrested and sent to the devlik internment camp in rajasthan and from there they were sent back to china after uh three four generation they lived there so th in this process uh, families were divided so yeah. i have written about the plight of the assamese chinese they were part of the indian identity but they suffered a lot due to the war they were not at fault they are our own people so this book uh, changed the perspective of our society now again there is a see revival of the old um say old relationship all that warmth that love so i believe that a pen can change the uh, course of uh, of a society or a time course of a this is of an issue so pen is mightier than a sword always yes <laughs> and later you also made a documentary based on makam yes. titled wars and tears yes. that you that you have translated it in english right no it is written in english this uh, documentary yeah no, you translated the novel in english yes yeah uh, yes and later yes. it was made into it a is, documentary it no the documentary is based on uh, that on the interview i took during my research when i was writing okay. makam and there is a coffee table book which is based on 
the again the same uh, issue, but uh, I have added there some very rare documents. Which genre do you write in, and what is the most dominant theme of most of your novels? Yeah. The category that you write under. Uh, the issues I take, or what the but the category like fiction, you write fiction. Generally, I write novel. No, yeah. you see, it depends on the subject. Sometimes the characters are true. Sometimes the characters are half. Uh, okay. that is based on a real character. Sometimes I have to conceal the identity. Mm -hmm. Generally, my stories are based on reality. But um, on the, it is the base this, that the facts are, or the basic facts or the reality. I construct my novels or I write my novels. Uh, most of my novels, if you, um, it is everywhere, generally. Uh, through your children is a reality. You can find it everywhere. People abandon their child. Some say it's a reality from, you know, um, like terrorism. It's also a reality everywhere. So I write against terrorism. So there, are, these are the issues I take generally. Ever thought of writing comedy or suspense novels? Or for that matter, novels for children. Ever thought of that? See, to write a novel or anything for children is very difficult. So I don't think that I am that <laughs> powerful writer. <laughs> I will try to write a novel uh, for the children. Uh, that I have, uh, I have a son and a daughter. I have seen how they grow, their questions, their confusions, uh, their dilemmas. Everything I have seen. And the transition of time. So I'll try, but I don't know. Um, I don't know whether it will be possible to write, like uh, understanding their mind, it is very difficult. So definitely I'll try to write a novel for the growing children, especially, because they, f uh, they face so many questions. They have so many confusions which they cannot um, share with their parents. Right. So for this confusing part of the young people, I'll try or definitely I'll try to write because I have seen these realities for a very close range. How long does it take you to write a novel? It depends, depends on the subject. Sometimes it takes two, three days for a small novel. But for Markham, uh, it took uh, four years. Four years. Four years. Yeah. Extensive research. So it depends on the issue. Uh, uh, to write a novel on a summer moment is very easy mm. for me because I know I have seen it. But to take up a uh, different issue, uh, have to I have to do research. So it takes time. So it depends on the subject. China has been invited as the guest of honor country yes. this year. Uh, any specific reason for that? No, everywhere here we have a guest of honor country. Yes. So this year India is, uh, China is a guest of honor country. Um, they are our neighbors and is a great civilization. Mm -hmm. So we have a relation with China for centuries, so from the ancient time. So this is also for as a great thing for us that China uh, this time, China is a guest of our country. Also. So that would strengthen our bilateral relationships also yes, with them. Cultural yes. uh, relations, and this will uh, enhance our relationship. Right, right. We hope. Yeah, certainly, certainly yeah. it will happen. What steps is NBT taking to promote uh, the Indian authors abroad? So. Um, we always try to promote our authors. We take part in uh, international uh, book fairs. Right. And we have a program of like, uh, supporting like uh, the, the foreign uh, publishers to translate our books published by Indian publishers and, um, and that is in different languages. 
this our books they will publish they will translate to the foreign languages so we have this um, project and through this also we are trying to promote our authors in the international field what kind of response and how much attention uh, do the indian authors writing in english attract in the global literary arena we all know that our indian authors a few of indian authors they are very popular in the international mm. literary field but uh, they are the only a part of the indian literature they are not the only representative mm. so uh, you see, see the soul mm. of indian literature lies in the regional languages so uh, through translations also as, uh, there are so many writers uh, who have become very popular in the international field what is the international scope of sale of books uh, in other indian languages uh, in the global market Langu regional language mm -hmm. always it is uh, it have to be presented uh, that through translation translation only. exactly yes so yeah. uh, um, especially we have uh, i will uh, talk about our institution yes. so nbt is translating different indian languages uh, that uh, some books of from different indian languages to english and trying to uh, say, uh, keep take it forward to the international literary field i've heard that nbt is also uh, working towards encouraging towards restoring the dying dialects of the bastar district of chatisgarh yeah yes, this is a very uh, special work we uh, we have mm -hmm. done uh but buster yes uh, there are, there are many tribes uh, especially sindhi tribes they speak different dialects and languages but they don't know each other's languages so this time we have uh, organized one workshop and there are tribal um, uh, artist they were also invited and the local writers will encourage to write in original language original languages their their languages and this time for the first time this tribal artists they um uh, were trained or they uh, came to know how to uh, illustrate a book okay. so we are publishing this books mm -hmm. but not only buster we are we have a project we are planning to um that um, help uh, or assist those uh, underdeveloped languages dying languages and the languages spoken by the underdeveloped communities we'll try to encourage them and we'll try to save the language and protect the language and to help them to promote their language and this is a uh, that a uh, big project we are taking this time uh, in all the regions of india now that's a great thing to know yeah we is yeah. we have only started but uh, we have we are planning to uh, cover all the dying languages okay. if if it is possible mm -hmm. that um, in remote areas uh, and underdeveloped areas also there are so many languages that are dying dying la they, all the dying languages of india yes we tr okay. will try and not yeah. only the dying languages but the that the language spoken by the underdeveloped communities okay and um, the underdeveloped languages also we will try to support them by publishing their uh, books on that lang that language like mm -hmm. uh, kokboro like okay. aunaga uh, like um, boro which languages are these um, kokboro is from tripura aunaga okay. you know from nagaland and okay. boro is from assam so there are mm -hmm. different other languages from bastar mm -hmm. so the the this time we are publishing a, the the books it is written in three languages uh two dialects or two like uh, local language and in hindi so that the readers the local leaders can also read um, can also understand the other languages and the people from the other parts of right, in, right. Uh, india they can also read the uh, read yes. in hindi so this uh, i think um, this is a very good project of an uh, nbt yeah certainly a wonderful project how is nbt working towards encouraging the new young authors this is young india you know yeah so nbt is giving more focus and thirst on the 
young authors. So this time, um, last year, our honorable minister announced a novel Ekhan Mala okay. and last book fair. Mm. So this time we are publishing um, uh, some uh, anthologies and some individual books uh, uh, in different languages. So uh, in the anthologies, uh, they, they is, it will cover the short story writers, uh, 15 to 20. So uh, we'll try to encourage them, not only encourage the new authors, but to giving you this platform right, where they can the meet, thing, they right? can exchange their ideas. Mm -hmm. And also we'll try to give them more exposure uh, through translation. Yes. Yeah, we'll try, this is the beginning only. Uh, it will be displayed in the book fair. <coughs> the books we have already mm. published in different languages. What about women authors? Uh, do you have works that have been written by uh, women authors also? Would that would they be also showcased in this year's in book this fair? anthology zone? There are many women authors. Okay, uh, under forty, all are young authors. Okay. so there are many uh, women authors mm. there, 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 whose stories we have included in the anthologies. How is NBT contributing towards children's literature? So NBT um, is uh, giving uh, special importance to the children. And we have a separate um, section, separate uh, branch that is NCCL. And we have the um, uh, Readers Clubs uh, movement. So we are trying to encourage the children to enhance their reading habit and um, to publish books, uh, short stories, or any other book on children. So children literature is one of the important aspects of uh, the, the, uh, the publications of National Book Trust India. Over the years, we've noticed that the trend of reading has declined. Even worse, uh, people don't read. Very few people read. So what steps would NBT take to make people more book-minded? So uh, um, it's a, uh, it is a challenge for us yes, to definitely. Uh, <laughs> so increase the reading habit. Yeah. So we have been doing, um, working on this f uh, f uh, from the very beginning. But we're giving more uh, thrust on this s aspect. But um, Still, I believe that um, it is not the hundred percent true, because if you see that the, the, there is an increase in the, the number of publisher, number of authors, and this will, this shows a very positive picture of in the the uh, space of publishing, the field of publishing. So, uh, but. Still, we uh, we also feel that uh, that is you know, uh, reading habit. There is a it is a very good is a big challenge for us to keep that uh, making our Indian people, especially the new generation, book minded. Right, right. It's a challenge, and we are taking different st uh, steps for enhancing this. Thank you so much for taking your time out and being here with us. We wish you all the very best. Uh, may you succeed in all the challenges, overcome them, succeed them, and emerge victorious. For all the book lovers out there, you can visit the New Delhi World Book Fair 2016 at Pragati Maidan from 9th to 17th of January. The timings are 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. And for those of you who are not too fond of reading books, please visit the book fair because a reader gets to live a thousand lives in a lifetime while as a non-reader lives only one. On this note, I, Riddhi Sharpa, on behalf of Doordarshan, take leave of you. Today a reader, tomorrow a leader. Namaskar.